Good morning. I'm told that during World War I, British Admiral Lord David Beatty discovered that there was a major flaw in the British ships which caused many of them to sink really quickly. It was discovered that although the British ships had heavily armoured hulls, their wooden decks offered almost no protection against long-range artillery shells that dropped from overhead. And so only after the British began to armour their ships on top, as well as on their sides, did their ships stop sinking. And that reminds me of the next piece of armour in our Lockdown Lookup devotional series on the armour of God. And so I want us to look today at the shield of faith, which protects us from long-range enemy attack. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, Paul writes and says, In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Paul switches gears here. He's looked at the first three pieces of armor, the belt, the breastplate and the shoes. And now he says, in addition to all this, and now he begins to speak about the last three pieces of armor. And I believe there's a difference between the first three pieces of armor and the last three. So the question I have is, what are the two different categories of armor? Well, I think Paul talks about armor that you have versus armor that you take. Now, the first three pieces of armor that we've already looked at are things that you already have. You already have them in Christ. You've already put them on. They're fixed to your body. They're immovable. They're the basic preparation for battle. So, yes, it's true. We need the armor of what God has done for us in the past. But we also need the armor for the present. The three pieces of armor that Paul addresses now are things that you take up in each instance of battle every day. And that's why Paul now says, take, take the shield of faith, take the helmet of salvation, take the sword of the spirit. You do not fix these things to your body. They're something separate from you and they speak of activity. So picture a Roman soldier waiting in his barracks. And when the alarm is sounded, that's not the point at which he then decides to put on his armor. He's going to waste too much time. Because even a Roman soldier who's not actively engaged in battle at the time was still in his uniform. But when the call to battle comes, he takes up his shield. He puts on his helmet and he picks up the sword. And so what is this shield? Well, the shield is not what we normally think. It's not this small little thing. It was a large shield. It was about 1.2 meters tall. It was like an oblong door-shaped shield. And you could hide your whole body behind it and you could advance safely. And the first three pieces of armor are for backup, but the shield is out in the front. It's primary. It's able to be flexed and angled and moved. It's the first line of defense against long-range enemy attacks. And if you take your shield and put it together with other shields, it formed this massive line of defense against the enemy. The shield could also be covered in a thin layer of metal or even leather. And that leather could be soaked in water to extinguish the flames of the enemy that came. So what are the flaming arrows? Well, they are darts or arrows which could be dipped in a kind of tar set alight. And when those arrows hit a target, the tar would explode and shower flames of fire in every direction. The flaming arrows were often the first line of attack from the enemy. And they were designed to send confusion and panic to the enemy. The flaming arrows prepared then the way for a mass attack as troops would run in and get up close and personal. And so Satan fires these flaming darts at God's children. And sometimes there may have even been seasons in your life when the flaming arrows are flying fast and furiously. And I don't want you to underestimate the evil power of Satan. Yes, it's true. He's a defeated foe, but he won't go quietly. And you don't know what any day will bring. You know, sometimes I've found that I can have a great day of blessing. Sometimes that's on a Sunday. And the very next day, my day off on a Monday, I'm assaulted from all sides. So we don't know what any day would bring. We can be busy praying. Wham! All of a sudden, we're filled with doubt in the middle of our prayers. A lustful thought comes in. Suddenly, we've got anger towards somebody we didn't even know was there. We can be reading God's word. Wham! Suddenly there are a hundred other thoughts and to-do lists and tasks screaming for our attention. We can be busy serving God. We can be busy serving others and then wham! Suddenly we just hear this whisper in our minds. Who do you think you are to serve God? You're not good enough. And we just 
faced with doubt. We can be in the middle of a worship service, busy worshiping Christ, and wham, suddenly we, we're doubting that God even exists. We're doubting whether our worship makes any difference at all. Now the flaming arrows can be darts of doubt. There can be evil thoughts, accusing questions, confusion, animosity towards God, negativity, worry, sudden fear that comes on us. It can be laziness, it can be self-absorption, it can be lust, temptations, our imaginations, fantasizing about evil. Maybe it's even picturing scenarios. You know, maybe I'd be better off if I wasn't a Christian. And I think sometimes these darts can be delivered so powerfully through persecution and sickness or suffering. And I've often asked myself, how come Satan never fights against us watching our favorite TV show with a good bowl of popcorn? But what happens when we try and pray or we open the Bible? It's then that Satan sends a barrage of flaming arrows our way. How come our minds can meditate for hours on how to make money? But when we try to focus on God, we have a grasshopper mind that jumps all over the place. And I've been encouraged when I read some of the deep prayers of some of the great heroes of the faith and history. And to hear them share that they even had blasphemous thoughts about God right when they least expected it. That's because Satan is alive. These fiery darts are from the evil one. Satan wants you to think, how can I even be a Christian if I have thoughts like this? Satan always wants to attack our position in Christ to get us to doubt what Christ has done on the cross. He wants to get us to focus on our sinful selves instead of Christ. To see these scary flaming arrows and to forget all about the shield of faith. So how do you combat the flaming arrows? Well, Paul tells us you take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the the flaming arrows of the evil one. You hold up the shield of faith and you hide behind it. And the shield represents faith. And what is faith? I believe faith is the ability to quickly apply what we know and what we believe to be true. Because we need a quick answer to everything that Satan throws at us from every direction to move the shield of faith quickly into position because Satan can come from any angle. Faith is belief in action. If I believe that this chair can hold me, then what do I do? I sit on it. I entrust myself to it. And until I've acted on my belief, I have not exercised faith. But my faith is only as good as the object of my faith. And faith always points to to its object, not to itself. This is God's armor. It's not my armor. The shield of faith is God's shield. And God says to Abram in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1 in a vision. He says, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Psalm 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. That's the belief. Therefore, in the light of that belief, we will not fear. And faith points to God's promises. It points to God's power. It points to God's presence. So I hold up the shield of faith and I say, Lord, if you've said it, I believe it. And I'm going to act on it. Lord, I'm going to step out in faith on your promises. I'm going to step out in your power and with your presence. And when the flaming arrows come, hold up the shield of faith and shout, Jesus died for me. He rose again. He loves me. I am bought with a price. I am his. Hold up the shield of faith to temptation and cry out, I won't believe a lie. Temptation, whatever your name, whoever you are, you will not bring me the happiness that can only be found in Christ. Hold up the shield of faith and declare, I am not alone. Jesus right now is making intercession for me from the very throne room of heaven. O fellow soldier of Christ, you may not be able to stop the flaming arrows from being launched, but you can extinguish and nullify their damage. Even Jesus was tempted just like you are. He also felt the flaming arrows, but those arrows never penetrated the force field of faith that comes from the truth of God's word. So resist the devil and he will flee. Don't retreat. Stand your ground. Trust God and step forward in faith. And I promise you, brothers and sisters, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. May God bless you this day.